Hey everybody, welcome back to Gentleman's Life. Just do a little quick chat here. Thought I'd uh, check in and kind of show you uh, the new, you know, area I'll be living in. So right now I'm just in the pu public parks area here. You got some basketball courts and, and things like that. But what I really wanted to show you was uh, just outside of town. So I'm going to stop for a second and turn the camera around and uh, give you a view of what it's like just outside of town. So here we go. You can see like town itself is all flat and more or less desert area. But right outside town there you can see the mountains. So we're sitting at about 4,000 feet is where I'm standing, give or take. And those go up into the eight and 9,000 range. So that'll be really nice. Gonna go exploring. Maybe I can do some videos up there. Um, either biking or hiking or who knows what. But that's really nice to, uh, to see some nice you know, mountainous and forested area there. So uh, also, wrist check. And I've got the uh, the Christopher Ward, the GMT on. As you can see, I put it on the bracelet, so it gives it a different look, but uh, it's not too bad, really. So, bracelet for the GMT right now. Love the color red of that bezel. And, uh, you know, the big thing I like about uh, the Christopher Ward GMT, the Trident GMT, is that, um, this, you can get it in the smaller size, and that's really hard to find these days. I mean, obviously Rolex is a GMT master at, you know, 40 millimeters. But, um, but to be honest, uh, I can't afford, you know, a $9,000 GMT watch right now. And uh, most everything else is, you know, 42, 43, 44 millimeters. Uh, I was looking at the Aquaterra GMT, but, you know, even that's 43 millimeters, uh, the main size, you know, and uh, everything else. Uh, is all 42s, but Christopher Ward thankfully does offer both a 42, it's really a 42 and a half, they're calling it 43 I think now, and the 38 millimeter, which is what I got on, and for skinny wristed folks or those of us who like, you know, smaller watches, that 38 millimeter really does go good, and it's hard enough to find GMTs now anyways, even without the, uh, the small size, uh, you know, with uh, ETA limiting their supply, a lot of, you know, companies, you know, they run out of their GMTs so fast. So um, that's why I decided to go with the nice little 38 millimeter Christopher Ward until, you know, I, ca I can save up and pick that big occasion for getting GMT Master because the blue black is still, you know, one of the top three watches on my list. Um, so we'll see uh, when that happens. I'm thinking it'll be so. This is kind of turning ran random. Uh, gentlemen talk and rambling but I'm gonna go on with it anyways uh, I'm considering at the end of my current uh, contract with a military you know going into the part-time military and going and getting an advanced degree a master's degree um, and if I can do that and go get another job I would consider maybe um, if the timing works out you know getting the Rolex to coincide with graduation from a master's program but we'll just see I'm finishing up the uh, bachelor's degree in the next couple years I'm just doing one class at a time while I work full-time but I'm only a few classes away now. And uh, if I decide to go to an advanced degree and get into some place I want to go to and a program I want, then uh, that'd be, to me, it would be a good, great time to get a Rolex, be graduating from the master's program, you know, the master's degree. Uh, kind of great commemoration of that. Uh, if, you know, I have that jo a job lined up that I want when I, when I graduate, so we'll see. But I'm thinking about saving the, the Rolex, the GMT Master, which is the only Rolex I know I'm going to buy someday is uh, I'm trying to save that for a major occasion, you know, getting married or the master's program or maybe a decade from now when I turn 40, um, something like that. Because all, all three of those things may, you know, may happen in that next decade. Well, one, obviously I'll turn 40 in the next decade no matter what. But the rest of those, the other two of those might happen too. You never know. So, so saving for that. But I wanted a GMT to, you know, tide me over until um, I do have the occasion and the money to get the Rolex and uh, it was hard finding something small enough. Um, so for me, I ended up going with the, the small size Christopher Ward and that's worked out really well so far. So yeah, it's nice having that kind of more classically sized uh, watch with a GMT function. Um, other things really, I'm just looking forward to getting out and enjoying, you know, enjoying the time up in the mountains at some point when I have some free time 
and uh, that sort of thing. I'm trying to get internet sorted for my new apartment. That's turning out to be a major pain and hassle. No surprise there. And, uh, and that's about all of what's going on right now. So let me, uh, let me know what you guys think when it comes to, you know, the, the watch size debate, you know, and uh, how hard it is to find some of those smaller watches. And what do you think of the GMTs being so limited right now? Do you think more companies are going to try to come out with their own GMTs or are they just going to keep trying to struggle on uh, with the limited supply from ETA? I'm intrigued. But um, that's all for now. So until next time.